Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Bonnets Creek. My name is Travis Gilbert. I'm the Educator and Collections Coordinator for the Old Baldy Foundation. And I am here on a beautiful Sunday morning at the Steed Bonnet Monument, located uh, just down the road from downtown Southport. Uh, right up the road here is the old Smithville Burying Grounds. And today is one of my favorite anniversaries in the history of Baldhead Island and the Lower Cape Fear. Today being the 302nd anniversary of the Battle of the Sandbars, this pirate battle that occurred at the mouth of the Cape Fear River in late September 1718. And uh, there's this, been this monument here for uh, several decades in downtown Southport. We'll get into um, some of the intricacies of that monument. Might not be the most accurate depiction of what happened uh, just offshore here in the Cape Fear River 302 years ago, uh, but it makes a great backdrop. <laughs> so uh, if you're listening out there, give us a shout out in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, let us know where you're listening from and your connection to Bald Head Island. If you want me to elaborate on something, I'd, I'd love to hear from you as well. So uh, we began this series uh, about a month ago. Steed Bonnet is the gentleman pirate. And good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Kara. Kara, I will see you this week. We'll be talking about some pirates uh, for sure with Jace. I'm looking forward uh, to our visit with y'all. Uh, so we've been talking about Steed Bonnet for over a month here at the Old Baldy Foundation. So if you recall, Steed Bonnet entered the Cape Fear River in the beginning of August 1718. And uh, he had just been double-crossed by Blackbeard. These two gentlemen met in the spring of 1718 in the Bahamas and formed an unlikely partnership. Uh, some suggest that it was maybe less than a partnership and uh, Blackbeard was taking advantage of Steed Bonnet's um, uh, you know, peculiarities. Uh, maybe he wasn't the best mariner. Maybe he wasn't the best leader of pirate troops. Uh, but uh, these two partners, one of their first targets is Charlestown, today Charleston, South Carolina, in late May of 1718. Uh, they successfully blockade that port, and it's all over a chest of medicine. Well, uh, shortly thereafter, the next month, just a few days later, they're trying to enter the port uh, of, of Beaufort. Beaufort really doesn't exist yet, and they actually refer to that inlet as Old Topsail Inlet. Uh, those of us here in the Lower Cape Fear, we think of another topsail, Topsail Island, just a, a little bit south of Beaufort today. But it's when this fleet of pirate ship is trying to enter Old Topsail Inlet that Blackbeard's flagship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, accidentally runs aground on a sandbar. There is Phil. How's it going? Doing great. <laughs> uh, and when they're entering uh, the uh, inlet, uh, yeah, they accidentally run on ground on a sandbar. And the second ship aboard that fleet, called the Adventure, uh, is trying to get into Old Topsail Inlet to assist the Queen Anne's Revenge, maybe push this pirate flagship off the sandbar or pull it off the sandbar. And it too runs aground. And at that point, Steve, Van, uh, Steve Bonnet decides that he is going to leave Old Topsail Inlet and travel the inland waterways of North Carolina to Bath, North Carolina, where our proprietary governor, Charles Eden, lives. And he's going to ask Governor Eden for a pardon. Well, when Steve Bonnet makes his way back to Old Topsail Inlet, today Beaufort, North Carolina, pardon in hand, uh, Blackbeard's nowhere to be found. You see, very quickly, Steve Bonnet realizes that Blackbeard didn't accidentally run that ship aground. He did it on purpose. And as soon as Steve Bonnet was out of eyesight on his way to receive the pardon from Governor Eden in Bath, Blackbeard took off with what accumulated treasure they had had, taking his favorite pirates and leaving, discarding the rest, marooning them on a sandbar outside Old Topsail Inlet, outside of Beaufort. Good morning, y'all. 
gotta love Southport. You run into everybody you know. It's a small town. Everybody's happy. Everybody's full of smiles. I passed the Episcopal Church. They were worshiping out in the front yard. Locals was full. Uh, what a great town. Jeff, good morning. Good story, Travis, uh, from Cayuga Falls, Ohio. I probably butchered that, Jeff, but thank you for joining us. And Dixie and Jim, uh, we got uh, Lula, quite a few listeners. Uh, Teresa, uh, good morning uh, up there from uh, Pennsylvania. It's uh, great to hear from you all, Melissa and Gina. Uh, good morning, everybody. So, yes, Blackbeard has double-crossed Steed Bonnet. So Steed Bonnet takes his ship, the Royal James, he actually renames it the Revenge, and goes off north of Old Topsail Inlet, up around the Capes of Virginia and the Delaware Bay. He doesn't find Blackbeard up there, he doesn't find his Revenge, but he finds two prize ships, the Francis and the Fortune. And is when Steve Bonnet enters the Cape Fear River in early August of 1718, he has these two prize ships with him, the Francis and the Fortune. And their captains and some of their crew are actually prisoners of Steve Bonnet while he's here in the Cape Fear River. And he spends a month here. He decides that uh, very likely it's a great place to wait out hurricane season. Um, we might disagree with him today. We got uh, hit with a, a pretty nasty storm just a, a month ago when Steve Bonnet, 302 years ago, would have been in this river. But it certainly beats being out in the open and the high seas. So Steve Bonnet throughout August and September of 1718 is out here in the mouth of the Cape Fear River with his two prize ships, the Francis, Francis and the Fortune, and all these other individuals stumble upon Steve Bonnet throughout these few weeks in the Cape Fear River. Some, like two gentlemen that appeared in a leaking canoe uh, from Bath, uh, may have been uh, warned that Steve Bonnet was here and may have been wanting to join Steve Bonnet's crew. Uh, others like uh, Jonathan Clark that we mentioned on one of these videos. Jonathan Clark and a Captain Dalton uh, uh, entered the Cape Fear River and accidentally ran into Steed Bonnet and became his prisoners. Now these characters, including uh, Roland Sharp, is another prisoner that's going to be forced to uh, work some of the pumps in Steed Bonnet's ships. Uh, these individuals that are prisoners of Steve Bonnet in the Cape Fear River are going to play an important role in the weeks after today's video. They are going to provide the King's testimony during the trial that occurs throughout November down in Charlestown, South Carolina. So it is not the last we're going to hear from individuals like Roland Sharp and Jonathan Clark, who are prisoners in the hull of this ship, the Revenge, formerly the Royal James, under the command of the gentleman pirate, Steve Bonnet. But back to what was happening today. So it is just a few days before Steve Bonnet says, okay, uh, I think hurricane season is finished. Uh, I have actually uh, outfitted and careened my ship uh, enough uh, well, uh, so I'm going to leave this, um, this river, the safety of this river. And it's right when they're about ready to leave, yesterday evening, September 26, 1718, two ships appear out on the horizon at the mouth of the Cape Fear River. It's the Henry and it's the Sea Nymph. They're under the command of Colonel William Rett, and they're from Charlestown, South Carolina. And they have not forgotten what the gentleman pirate did to their city just a few months earlier in that spring of 1718. They're here to seek some revenge themselves. Now, unfortunately, shortly before sundown, yesterday evening, September 26, 1718, uh, the, uh, the Sea Nymph and the Henry, under the command of Colonel William Rett, those pirate hunter sloops, they accidentally run aground on sandbars trying to enter that river. 
and it's going to foreshadow what is going to happen the next day. But it isn't until after sundown uh, that they're able to unmoor their ships, to refloat their ships off of that sandbar. Meanwhile, Steve Bonnet, the previous evening, uh, <laughs> there goes Mary Ellen. <laughs> um, yesterday uh, evening, uh, Steve Bonnet doesn't know the identities of these two sloops, all right? So he sends three canoes full of pirates down to the mouth of the river to seek out the identities of these two sloops. And when the pirates return to see Bonnet, they say, these sloops are heavily armed. There are men with rifles on the decks of the ships. These are not merchantmen. These are not waiting ducks, sitting ducks. These are not targets for us to plunder to get two more prizes. These are armed ships here to wage battle. So all night, the pirates under the gentleman pirate, Steed Bonnet, aboard the Revenge, formerly the Royal James, they make preparations. Further down the river, on the Sea Nymph and the Henry, Colonel William Rhett's ships make preparations. And at daylight, September 27th, today, 302 years ago in the year 1718, Steed Bonnet decides he's going to make a run for it. He is actually going to take his ship and he is going to try to sail past the two pirate hunter ships. He's going to make it a running battle. And if he can sail past the Sea Nymph and the Henry and make it to the open seas, he perhaps can escape. Meanwhile, Colonel William Rhett's plan is if he can wedge, all right, if he can wedge the pirates in between the Sea Nymph and the Henry, he can give several broadsides that might capitulate Steve Bonnet. So that's these two gentlemen's battle plans. And early daylight, Steve Bonnet takes off. He heads towards the mouth of the Cape Fear River aboard the Revenge. Meanwhile, Colonel William Rhett heads upstream, trying to pinch the pirates in between his two warships. And then suddenly, all three ships run aground on a sandbar. So all five to six hours of this pirate battle in the mouth of the Cape Fear River are fought with all three ships stuck in the mud, stuck on a sandbar unable to move and it's the pirate hunters under Colonel William Rhett that get the short end of the stick because when their ship runs aground their deck is tilted towards the pirates so their deck is exposed to all the small arms fire meanwhile the revenge the pirate ship under the command of Steed Bonnet their deck when it's run aground is tilted away from the pirate hunters aboard the Henry and the Sea Nymph so their deck almost acts like a, a defensive mechanism. It's almost like a bulwark or a, um, um, a wall, a barrier. So they're able to actually reload their guns under the safety of this tilted deck, tilted away from the pirate hunters. And their uh, decks being tilted, the pirate hunters' cannons are pointing up into the sky, and the pirate hunters, their cannons are pointed down into the water. So all five hours of this battle are fought really with small arms fire. The cannons are obsolete because these um, um, ships are, are run aground and tilted in the wrong direction. Oops. So it's just a waiting in game, folks. It's just a waiting game. They know that the tide will eventually come back into the river and deepen the river and refloat their ships off of these sandbars. And unfortunately for the pirates, karma is going to catch up with them. Although they got the best of the deal when they ran aground because their deck is tilted away from the pirate hunters, they are further upstream when they get stuck on a sandbar. So of course, when the tide comes into the river, it's going to unmoor or refloat the ship that is further downstream first. That just so happens to be all those pirate hunters. So the Henry and the Sea Nymph are unstuck from the sandbar. 
and they kind of spend a little bit uh, recouping their losses, uh, getting their ship ready for the final stroke. And while Steve Bonnet is still stuck on that sandbar, Colonel William Rett and all those pirate hunters go in for the, what I call the kill shot. And they end up capturing Steve Bonnet and his entire crew. Now, at the very, very end, uh, we do know from uh, at least a primary resource that was written a few weeks after um, that Steve Bonnet wanted to blow his ship up. He wanted to uh, lay a charge in the magazine where all the gunpowder is stored ab uh, aboard the Revenge, the pirate ship, formerly uh, the Royal James. Uh, but his crew and some of the prisoners of war actually persuades um, the, uh, the pirate uh, not to blow the ship up, not to uh, basically commit suicide, to sacrifice himself and his entire crew rather than become prisoners. So we're going to leave the story there. 302 years ago, this famed Battle of the Sandbars or Battle of the Cape Fear River ends with Steed Bonnet being a captive of Colonel William Rhett the pirate hunter from Charlestown, South Carolina. And of course, we will pick up this story when Colonel William Rhett enters Charleston Harbor on October the 3rd, 1718, with all these prisoners, the pirates that had formerly laid waste to their city. Didn't devastate their city, but embarrassed Charleston. And let me tell you, if there's one thing you don't do, you don't embarrass any South Carolinian. <laughs> so let's check out this uh, monument, y'all. So uh, this is a monument that was uh, uh, placed here. Uh, we got a really great depiction of um, <laughs> a pirate here. Uh, let me read some of these comments. Uh, David Davis, Travis, you need your own Discovery Channel. Dude, uh, love the history lessons you bring us. Well, thank you, David. That was very kind of you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about Discovery Channel, maybe the History Channel. Uh, so uh, we got quite a few. Uh, David, David, what's up? Brent is watching. Hey, Brent and Heather, Gideon, Frankie, uh, John Gilbert's watching. Hey, good morning up there. Sharon and Kim, Susan, Joey, Brian, Sue. Teresa says, love, love, love. Your commentary is Teresa for Sanford, North Carolina. Born and raised in Southport. Uh, well, Teresa, thank you for tuning in and watching. Uh, Southport is just as kind and lovely as uh, you left it. And Ashley says, uh, hello from Oklahoma. Well, good morning, Ashley. Thank you for joining us. So yeah, this monument says, Steed Bonnet, the gentleman pirate, used the mouth of this creek as a hideout for his vessel, the Royal James, formerly called the Revenge. Here on September 26, 1718, the great Battle of the Sandbars was fought between the pirates and the men sent to capture them under the command of Colonel William Rett aboard the Henry and Sea Nymph. After a 24-hour battle, there were 19 men killed, 23 wounded, and Bonnet, with the remains of his pirate crew, surrendered. On November 8, 1718, 29 of the pirates were hanged in Charleston, South Carolina. A few weeks later, holding a cluster of flowers in his manacled hands, gentleman Steed Bonnet met the same fate on the gallows. This part of Cape Fear was a favorite meeting place for pirates, including the notorious Blackbeard and Mary Ann Blythe, the woman buccaneer. Uh, uh, good to hear from you, Brett. Yeah, always love your stories. Well, thanks, Brett. And uh, Joey Kirkpatrick, uh, good morning and great story. Thank you, uh, Joey and Brett, for tuning in. So, uh, you know, I love this monument, but let's uh, break down a, a few things, uh, a few um, folklores. So first of all, it, it's called Bonnet's Creek, and it says um, that he used the mouth of this creek as a hideout. Well, um, first of all, okay, so Steed Bonnet's pirate ship wasn't um, that big. Uh, it was a small sloop. But let me just show you um, this creek uh, and, and what they're talking about here, because um, just a visual is going to show you that there's no way Steed Bonnet, the gentleman pirate, could hang out or hide out 
uh, in this creek. That would be a, a pretty um, a, an impeccable feat. Uh, it's kind of like Goldilocks. It just would not fit, folks. So um, this is Bonnet's Creek. And uh, y'all tell me, if you can fit a pirate ship in that creek, um, you know, you fooled me. Now, it does get a little bit bigger across the road. Uh, we are just a few hundred yards from the mouth of Bonnets Creek and the Cape Fear River. So you see uh, there is the creek and the river is right out there in the distance. Uh, but you'll notice um, it's not that much bigger. So uh, this idea that the creek uh, was a hideout uh, for Steve Bonnet, uh, not so much. So uh, not only is Steve Bonnet in the Cape Fear River throughout August and September of 1718 to wait out hurricane season, uh, his motive for coming here is he is kind of trying to um, um, seek out Blackbeard to get some revenge after Blackbeard double-crossed him up in Old Topsail Inlet, today Beaufort, North Carolina. But another reason is that Steed Bonnet was here to careen his ship. And to careen a ship is to mean to uh, push it over on its side, expose the hull of that ship, and then remove the barnacles that are attaching themselves to the hull of your ship and slowing it down. You're also going to need to uh, replace any wood that is rotted uh, from worms. Worms would bore into uh, the bottom of these wooden hulled ships uh, and eventually they become leaky. Um, and then, uh, Phil, you're taking away our claim to fame. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying, hey, Phil, hey, hey, you know me. I love some good folklore. Uh, um, so, so, you know, I think what is happening here, it's not necessarily that Steed Bonnet is hiding out or hanging out in Bonnet's Creek. Uh, he is coming here and using the sandy shallow banks of the mouth of this creek where it empties into the Cape Fear River and its treed, um, his, its wooded shoreline to, uh, to careen a ship. They need a, a sandy bank to push the ship down on its hull. Uh, preferably they want it sandy and an area that has a nice slope so when the high tide comes in it's going to naturally kind of give yourself a little bit more of ease of pushing that ship up and down. Uh, not only do you want um, that sandy shore that's tidal, uh, you also uh, want a, a wooded shoreline so you can um, put a block and tackle uh, up against the, the tree trunks and use those as leverage to uh, pull uh, your ship down and then pull it back up. Now you could also do that with a prize ship and he could have been doing that with the Francis and the Fortune. Uh, but additionally, and Phil, this will reclaim y'all's thunder, Bonnet's Creek is fresh water, and pirates are going to need fresh water. So uh, Blackbeard is up in Ocracoke. He's not in the mouth of the Chesapeake. He's not in the mouth of the Delaware. He's not in the Cape Fear, all these places that Steve Bonnet uh, looked. Uh, he's up in Ocracoke. And one of the reasons that Blackbeard hangs out at Ocracoke at the same time is because Ocracoke has the old well. It's a freshwater well. It's one of the oldest fresh, uh, discovered freshwater wells uh, of, you know, along the eastern uh, North Carolina. It's depicted in very, very early maps. Uh, you cannot underestimate the um, importance of, of seeking out and having a base of fresh water. And Bonnet's Creek, although it's tidal, and although it's going to have um, um, some salinity, it's going to uh, be brackish, it's gonna have salt water, especially at high tide, there is a freshwater element. So uh, not using Bonnet's Creek as a hangout, but could be using it for freshwater supply, could be using the topography of the mouth of that creek to assist in careening his ship. Um, but there you see, uh, not using it as a hideout or hangout. So uh, the other uh, um, portion that I want to discuss on this monument is this idea that um, other pirates were here in the Cape Fear. Now, unfortunately, the historical record is mum on whether Blackbeard or Anne Bonny, uh, Mary Reed, Jack, Calico Jack um, ever came 
to Bald Head Island, ever came to Cape Fear, ever came to Smithville or Southport, and it wasn't even a town yet, uh, cannot confirm it. Um, they certainly came by these parts uh, as they're traveling up and down uh, the southeastern North, uh, North American coast. Um, but we have no evidence to suggest they ever came into the river. Now, the pirate we do know, or have a very, very strong likely, likelihood that he came, is Steed Bonnet. We do not believe that this was Steed Bonnet's first visit into the mouth of the Cape Fear River. Steed Bonnet was from Bar Barbados. Uh, let me repeat that. Steed Bonnet was from Barbados. There we go. We got it right that time. Steve Bonnet grew up on a small island that had a long history or relationship with the Cape Fear River. Just a few decades before Steve Bonnet met his fate in the Cape Fear River, Barbadian planters and colonizers had entered the Cape Fear River in the 1660s seeking to establish the original Charlestown. Yes, the place that Colonel William Rhett came from and all these pirate hunters came from, the port that Steed Bonnet helped blockade, that was supposed to be on the Cape Fear River. In the 1660s, Barbadian settlers arrived at the mouth of Town Creek, which is about, I don't know, 15 miles or so north of where I am on this side of the river. They created a settlement called Charlestown in honor of Charles II, the King of England. Long live the King. And uh, it failed for a variety of reasons. It failed because it did not have su support from the Lord's proprietors, uh, these um, English noblemen that owned Carolina at this time. It failed uh, because of disputes between the indigenous populations, the Cape Fear Indians around here. Um, it, you know, lots of reasons it failed. And of course they tried again and were successful down where the Ashley and Cooper Rivers meet south of us and would have stayed Charleston, South Carolina. But it is highly likely that Steed Bonnet would have grew up near individuals that had maybe a financial interest, uh, had a family member that was uh, part of that expedition to Cape Fear. Um, it, you know, it seems likely that Steve Bonnet would have been familiar with the Cape Fear River by growing up in Barbados with the Barbadian community's strong financial uh, interest and um, strong uh, attachment to the Cape Fear because of that previous settlement. So, the previous summer in 1717, when Steve Bonnet needed to careen his ship, it is very likely that he came here into the mouth of the Cape Fear River because he and perhaps some of his crew from Barbados, Barbados on the Rule James were familiar with the Cape Fear River and its topography and how great that topography was for careening a ship. So although the monument behind me suggests that Blackbeard and Mary Reed and some of these other pirates came and this was a hangout for pirates, can't confirm that. I'm not going to deny it. But it surely was a hangout for the pirates under the command of the gentleman pirate, Steed Bonnet. So I'm going to wrap this up today. Good morning, G. Mark Turner and Susan. Uh, so I'm going to wrap this up today. It's a great little monument here at uh, Bonnet's Creek. Uh, it is just, again, just north of downtown Southport. Um, it's, uh, see, I uh, forgot, I thought there used to be a little plaque on the back, but there is not. So join us, uh, we're going to continue these videos tracking in real time the final months of Steed Bonnet. So our story is now going to take us from the Cape Fear River down to Charleston, South Carolina where Colonel William Red is going to enter the harbor back, uh, is going to enter once again the harbor on October the 3rd, 1718. Uh, very glorious, triumphal uh, entry back into his town. Uh, Steed Bonnet in shackles, he has successfully captured the gentleman pirate. And of course there's going to be a trial, but during that trial, Steed Bonnet is going to escape. And there's going to be a second battle we need to discuss called Battle of Sullivan's Island. 
So that is all in the future. The next few weeks are going to be just as exciting as we real-time track the final months of Steve Bonnet, the Gentleman Pirate. So Cynthia, good morning, Cynthia. Uh, so thank you again for joining us this morning. If you are listening into the future, perhaps this afternoon or later this week, drop us a line in the comments. We'll get back to you. We'd love to hear from you what your connection to Old Baldy Lighthouse or Baldhead Island or Southport is. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, we will get back to you. So again, thank you very much. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your Sunday.